Do, 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 do. Well, I don't know if anybody's watching because I think there's a little buffer issue. And I'm told that when I first turn on, nobody's actually watching. But yet I get comments, which is weird. All right. Well, I'm going to stall a little bit for the rest of the uh, platforms to come in. And I'm going to print my notes. And watch me move slowly so that everybody can get in here. And we'll all be together once I have my notes. That's a lot of notes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the highlight of human civilization. It's called Coffee with Scott Adams, and I'm pretty sure you've never had a better time. If you'd like to take this experience up to levels that nobody can really understand, it's beyond the ability of the human brain to process it. All you need for that is a cup or a mug or a glass, a tank of shells or stein, a canteen jug or flask, a vessel of any kind. Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like coffee. And join me now for the unparalleled pleasure of the dopamine hit of the day, the thing that makes everything better. It's called the simultaneous sip and sipping. Now go. Ah, one of the best. Well, boy, do we have a good, good show for you today. I wish I were you just so I could watch this show. So good. Well, NBC News has uh, come to the startling um, discovery, thanks to some new research, that getting angry can help people overcome challenges. Huh. Who ever knew that getting angry could motivate you? Everybody? How about let's do some research on something that literally every single human being already knows pretty much at birth. Do you know what an angry little baby gets? More stuff. Turns out that being angry is very motivating. I dare say it's a secret to my success. I don't know about the rest of you, but nothing motivates me more than being angry. Nothing. <laughs> it's the number one motivator. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to chew my way through that wall. I'm so angry. Well, anger makes you motivated, but what else affects you? Well, it turns out that being replaced by robots in your place of work can make workers have a sense of uh, meaningfulness. They lose their meaningfulness and autonomy, and it makes them sad. So if you're if you're Forced to work with robots, it'll make you sad because you won't have any meaning. Do you know what you can do to overcome your feeling of sadness and lack of motivation because of your robots? Get mad at the robots. It'll bring back your sense of agency. You get things done. Yeah. So you can conquer your sadness with something I call getting really angry over nothing. If you've never tried it, it's way better than it sounds. Seriously, do you ever have a day when you're just feeling sad and nothing will cheer you up, but then something comes along that makes you angry? And you're like, well, angry is better than sad. It's way better. I got more energy. So yeah, next time you're sad, get mad. It's a great idea. There's a uh, company called uh, uh, Helix Technologies. In Southeast, Southeast Asia, they're uh, already taking reservations for a some kind of a subscription vehicle, an electronic vehicle. So an electric car that um, you could rent for 25 cents an hour, which would come out to something like $6 a day, including everything from maintenance to insurance, and you don't have to buy anything and you don't have to fix anything. Is that a big idea? Do you, th do you think that renting a subscription vehicle, way, way cheaper, and no work whatsoever, you don't have to, bring, you don't have to put gas in it, you know, because uh, presumably you just pick it up when it's already charged and 
use it till you give it back? Well, I don't know. It sounds good if it's way cheaper. On the other hand, wouldn't you rather have self-driving cars? Have, have you thought about what the world would be like with fully autonomous cars where you really don't have to pay attention? The first thing you do is you change the interior of the cab. So the cab should just be sort of circular couch or something like that, or maybe even a couch where you can actually just take a nap on a couch. I want an electric car that knows how to find a charging station, and the only thing I do is put in the destination. I would replace all airline travel and all my vacation plans with an electric car. Just one electric car. As long as it did its own driving, its own refilling, and, uh, and it could talk to me. Now imagine also that your fully self-driving car has AI, like Grok, and it can talk to you while you're driving, and you just tell it what you want. Say, hey, uh, Grok, um, can you look for a good restaurant? What kind of restaurant would you like? I don't know, something with this kind of food or that kind of food. And Grok will say, well, I found three. Which one sounds good? Oh, go to that one. I want to be able to walk outside, sit in my car with no steering wheel, no responsibility, be able to work on my laptop, take a nap, or have a conversation with Grok and learn something. And the next thing I know, I'm in another town. And it's like a cool town, and I can hang out there. And if I want to go visit anything, I'll say, hey, hey, Grok, can you take me to, are there any museums or any place I should visit? And it just figures out your whole, uh, your whole thing. It just, you know, finds you a public restroom, all that stuff. That's when I'll be traveling. I'm going to be uh, older than Joe Biden and just sitting back in that self-driving car saying, ah, I've never seen Ohio. Take me to Ohio. Well, here's a uh, possible validation of a uh, prediction I made uh, in the 90s when I wrote my book, The Dilbert Future. Now, you've heard me say this before, but what you haven't heard me say is that it's here. <laughs> this is the least, the least likely prediction that was ever likely to happen. You ready? My prediction was that there would be cameras inside the home and inside every enclosed space, except maybe bathrooms, and that they would always be on, uh, except it would be encrypted. So nobody would ever be able to see it, maybe even including yourself in your own home, unless there was a court order to unencrypt it. Now, did that sound like a uh, thing that might actually happen? In the 90s, I predicted in the 90s, based on the cost of cameras continuing to drop. So here's what's new. There is a technology that will encrypt um, all the cameras in your house, let's say on robots. If you have a robot in your house and you're going to have a robot in your house, the robot's going to have a camera and it's going to be connected to the internet. And you're going to say to yourself, I don't want somebody having a court order and you know maybe looking through my video. So now they have a technology where the, the robot's video would be stored not as video but rather as something that only a computer could understand. And apparently it can't be reverse engineered, or, or at least not yet. So, so you can't reverse it and figure out what the, the robot saw. So the robot will be able to do its thing just based on patterns. So it doesn't, it's not seeing like a person. It's just using patterns to do its thing. So in effect, if you've got robots and more digital devices in your house, it's possible that everything will be recorded all the time. It will just be encrypted. And then there will be some court order or something where somebody will say, well, somebody got murdered, so we better find out what the robot saw. Now, it could be that you'll never be able to see it, but maybe you could query the robot. As in, okay, robot, I know we can't play back your video to see the murder, but tell us in your own words what you saw. Well, I was in the living room and I heard shots. So get a robot better than a guard dog. You know, if the, if the bad guys sh shoot your guard dog, you know, the guard dog can't talk. But if they shoot your robot, 
well, you know, let's say the robot sees you doing a crime and you shoot the robot, the robot may have already downloaded its data. <laughs> it might be that shooting the robot can't help you because it already downloaded its data. So that's coming. Encrypted video in your house. Um, are you following the story of Grace Price? I think she's 18 years old and has some kind of a, maybe a book, but she's got a big message about food being poison and that our current food supply is basically killing us. So she made it all the way to Jesse Waters' show and, and on Fox News, and she's making quite a dent here. And she's talking about specifically uh, not getting teens addicted to sugar and that there'll be more cancers, et cetera. Well, I think she's right. I think she's absolutely right. Now, I point this out because does it feel to you that this uh, um, pushback on the food supply is getting bigger? I'm having trouble deciding what are real, real trends and what are just things I'm being exposed to by social media. You know, because sometimes you, you're fooled into thinking it's a big deal when it's not at all. But I see more and more serious people, and Grace is one of them. Uh, RFK Jr. is another. Uh, I'm another. I think we're all serious people. And we're all saying, hey, hey, there's something really, really wrong with the food supply. Like, seriously wrong with it. Like, way not like the, the old days. Wrong at a level that's the biggest scandal in American history. Maybe bigger than World War II. Maybe bigger than anything we've ever seen. It could be the biggest scandal in American history, the food supply, because it affects everybody. So I think that that trend is going to grow because I can't imagine it shrinking. So maybe that's another case where populism is necessary. Why does the world need populism? Populism defined by something like the public getting what it's asking for. Well, I think it's obvious. Governments do not serve people. And I'm, I'm working toward the theme of the day, starting with some fun stories, but there's a theme coming. I'll get to it. All right. Um, there's a new study says that uh, there are various kinds of placebos, and some placebos work better than others. For example, um, this is a study that came out of somewhere. Anyway, if your placebo is a certain color, it might work better than another color. In other words, if the pill is blue, people think, oh, that'll help me relax. But if you gave somebody a, a red-colored pill, you know, we're not talking red pill stuff here, but just a red-colored pill, their brain might not say, well, a red pill isn't going to make me relax. Now, for some people, taking a blue pill is definitely not going to relax them, if you know what I mean. Am I right? Yeah, but uh, you get the idea that if you're more impressed with the, the physical uh, pill, it works better. Now, also, if they tell you that the pill costs more, it works better. So if they say, hey, take this pill, it costs $100 and it'll fix your whatever, it won't work nearly as well as if they tell you, ah, this is such a good pill, $1,500 for one pill. And then people will get much better because they paid $1,500 for a pill. Now, here's the payoff. You're probably not super surprised at any of that, are you? Since the placebo is a psychological effect, they say. Uh, it doesn't surprise you that if you add a little uh, juice to the psychology of the situation, you get a better effect. Well, I'm going to add this to the category of science that I call should have asked Scott. What year did I first know that uh, the quality of the placebo would make a difference? Oh, 1981, because I learned it in hypnosis class. It's basic. It's one of the most basic elements of hypnosis. If you're a hypnotist and you want to hypnotize somebody and you want them to really you know, easily fall into the experience, you make sure you've got a diploma on your wall, ideally more than one, and by the way, this works for doctors and psychologists as well. The reason that doctors put their diploma on the wall is that it makes you healthier. <laughs> Isn't that funny? If you see a, a serious-looking diploma or, let's say, more than one on a doctor's wall, you will get healthier faster. And not because they have good credentials, 
is because you talked yourself into it. The placebo effect. So doctors know that. The, the reason the doctors wear the, the white outfits, they don't have to. Like there, there's no law that says doctor has to have like a stethoscope in their pl- pocket and, you know, nice shoes and all that. It's, it's all part of the placebo effect. Yeah, it's, it's part of making it all work. And it's a good idea. Same with your lawyer. Are you going to trust your lawyer as much if they show up in blue jeans? Best lawyer in the world, but they show up in blue jeans. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you will not. You know, unless there were some famous character or something. You wouldn't. No, you want to see the suit. Because the suit does make a difference. Now, we learned that in hypnosis, because if you're a hypnotist and you've got a nice office, people will go right into a trance. If you're just a a friend and you're like, hey, I hear you're a hypnotist, not nearly as effective. You need the whole show. It's It's part of the psychology of it. But I'd like to offer at least one more possibility. Maybe there's no such thing to the psychology of placebos or doctors or hypnotists. What if it's more proof that you can author your own experience in the simulation? What if your belief that something is true doesn't just change the psychology, which changes your body, which changes maybe your ability to get better? That's the way we've always thought of it. What if you're actually just authoring it? Uh, What if believing you're going to get better actually just changes reality directly? and not because your mind changed your body, your body fought off the disease or something. What if it just directly changes reality? And the reason I say what if is, I think that's exactly what's happening. Now, uh, what I mean is that I do think we're directly affecting our reality by our thoughts. If that explains placebos, I don't know. I won't take it that far, but I'd like to at least put it out there that it might not be a psychological effect at all. It could be uh, one more in a long list of uh, evidence that we're a simulation, a simulated reality, and that we change it with our thoughts. So there's that. All right, here's another thing I'm going to call a trend, even if it isn't. It might be a fake trend, but it sure feels real. Here's a story of a subway hero who uh, went into a subway sandwich place, and uh, there was some customer who was beating up the cashier. And it was a high school wrestler. And the high school wrestler took down the perp and waited until the authorities got there. So he's being called a hero, and he got some free Subway sandwiches and stuff like that. Do you think that men, and I'm sorry, ladies, this is only for the men. Do you think that men have given up? Not given up, that's the wrong word. Do you think they've had enough? That's the opposite of giving up. So what I mean is the opposite of giving up. Do you think they've had enough? Do you think the men are just going to go Daniel Penny no matter what happens? Here's what I think is happening. The Daniel Penny thing has two effects. The short-term effect is, oh, shit, I'm not going to do that. Look what happened to Daniel Penny, right? You all felt it. I'll bet every man felt that. Short-term effect. Short-term, whoa, I better not save anybody. Now, what's the long-term effect? Well, you're going to see the long-term effect all over the news today. Here's the long-term effect. Wrestler in Subway knows the Daniel Penny story, but he's had enough. Takes him down anyway. That's called being a man. That's what that is. He's just being a man. And we're not allowed to be men. Civilization said, you can't be a man. In fact, if you're a man, you suck. You're the problem. You're the colonizer. Men, the Women can do everything better. Go, girls. Go, ladies. There's nothing they can't do. And I think men just said, fuck everything. We're just going to be men. Because I don't think you can stop men in the long run. There, there's a male energy. You can slap it. You can suppress it. But that energy doesn't go nowhere. That, that, that energy is going somewhere. 
and you you put a little uh, Daniel Penny suppression on men, it'll work for a little while. But when we get out of that little trap, we're going to be pissed. And did I tell you that being mad is motivating? Men are mad. We're not just watching anymore. Now we're fucking mad. Do you know what got me canceled? Was it what I said? Somewhat. No, it's because I said, I've got enough. I'm done. You can't do anything to me. You cannot suppress whatever energy that I produce. It's going to fucking come out. You're not going to like it. I'm going to do it anyway. Because I'm a man. It's what I do. I'll, I'll give you a little flexibility until I don't. That's how it works. You want some flexibility? I'll give it to you. You want me to back down? Happy to do it. You want me to be um, a little back up a little bit so you can have a little more space? Happy to do it. Until you push me too far. And then there's nothing I won't do. There's nothing I won't do. Let me say that again. If you push me too far, there is literally nothing I won't do if you push me too far. So you're seeing me in my push too far mode, which is why I'm willing to say absolutely fucking anything in public. Because I'm done. I'm done. I'm done getting pushed. You want to put me in jail? Do you think I don't risk going to jail when I do this? You know I do, right? You're all aware of that? I'll talk, I'll talk about the news in a little bit, but you know, Scotland is putting people in jail for talking. Brazil's getting rid of your free speech. We'll talk about this. Trump's going to jail for fucking nothing. The January 6th people are locked up for fucking nothing. Yeah, I'm risking going to jail. And you know what? Fuck everybody. Fuck everybody. I'm done. I'm done playing. There's nothing you can do to me. And this subway hero, maybe he was done too. And maybe that's the story. Men are done. Do you know why I can say that the problem with the world is batshit fucking crazy liberal women? Because I'm done. Do you know why I wouldn't have said that in the past? Because I wanted to get laid. If I could never get laid again, <clears throat> but I can tell you what I really think, good. I'm ready. There's nothing you can do to me. I don't, there's nothing you can do to me. Nope. Batshit fucking crazy women are ruining the goddamn country. There you go. Cancel me. All right. Um, but as you know, women are better than men at everything. According to the New York Post, there's a new study uh, that says that... Uh, Men don't give women orgasms as well as women give other women orgasms. Yes, there's not a fucking thing in the world that women can do that isn't better than everything men can do. And there's another study that says that the country having the most sex is Turkey. The Turks are having the most sex. They're the most promiscuous. Uh, the average Turk has slept with more than 14 people. Wow. They don't specify how many of them are same sex versus different sex, and I have questions. Hey, average Turk, how many partners have you had? Well, are we counting just human? All right, let's limit it to human. Well, are we counting both sexes? I guess so. It's 2024. 14. Um, how about the other countries? Well, it turns out the United States isn't too high on that list. Uh, we're, th we're in 13th place of all the people who are having lots of partners. I'm not sure we should be happy about being at the top. <laughs> not necessarily your best situation. But, uh, and, but where are they having the most? Well, Australia came in second place. So the Australians have uh, 13 partners on average. Um, so if you want to have more sex and you're an American, do you know what you can do? You can go down under. Thank you. I'll take a sip. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, earlier before the show, I had a on, during the pre-show that only the local subscribers see. There was a gentleman who said he used to be a beekeeper, and I challenged him. I said, "You used to be a beekeeper, so you didn't really keep the bees, did you? Because you quit. You're no longer keeping the bees." He was. He wasn't so much a keeper of bees. He was a person who let the bees leave or he left the bees. That's not a beekeeper. Even though you thought you were a beekeeper, you were only temporarily with the bees. You weren't keeping them anywhere. You left. You know what you are now? You're a bee lever. You're not a keeper. You're a lever. So I, I think he became a minister because when he was no longer a beekeeper, he was a believer. Thank you, dad jokes, all day long. All day long, dad jokes. <sighs> yeah, you can take that with you. You can customize that in any way you like. <sighs> Going down under. All right. Meanwhile, France uh, is in 29th position. Oh, France. The one thing we loved about you was that you were so lusty and free with your sex, but it was all a lie. Apparently, if you want to get frisky, Turkey or New Zealand is where you want to go. Australia, good. Good. Well, some watchdogs have accused the Biden administration of inflating climate disaster numbers. Huh. Well, that, oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> who, who saw that coming? Yeah, let's, details, let's see. Uh, the NOAA, National Oceanic Alcoholics Anonymous, I think that's what NOAA is, uh, ballooned the cost of damages for Hurricane uh, Idalia. Never heard of it. Um, in 2023 storm. So anyway, they um, apparently the Biden administration used an estimate for storm damage that was just, you know, stupid. And out of context, ridiculous, and they got called out for it. Now, here's where I think you should count our blessings. All right. Just think about this. When the Biden administration went to, to tell you the, the storm damages, they were off by a factor of 10 because they just lied to get what they wanted. So they just inflated it by 10. Now, that, that tells you that that sort of number can be maybe not as reliable as it should be. Possibly not 100% reliable. But here's the good news. Those climate models, still 100%. Am I right? Yeah, everything that we audit turns out to be crooked, no matter where it is or who audits it or what organization it is. Everything. Except the climate models, and the elections, by the way, and the elections. Lucky. Lucky. The thing that's holding us together is that our science is so dependable, especially when they're predicting the future 80 years from now. Boy, are they good at that. Am I right? And also when they do elections, we nail those things. Everything else seems a little sketchy, and I'll admit, I'll admit that. But those two things... Perfect. Every time. Yeah. All right, and this gets me to my theme. Here's the theme. Everything that didn't make sense to you was always the CIA. Everything that would confuse you in the past, or, or currently, as in, why is that not fixed? Or why did it happen that way? It's all the CIA. Do you think I can make that case? Well, let me try. Story number one. Uh, there's a uh, account on X called Culture Critic. It's a lot of fun. And it tells us the story of how modern art, which was developed in, <clears throat> mostly in the United States, was a CIA psyop. What? <laughs> modern art? Now, it might have happened on its own, but it turns out that when modern art emerged as a, you know, a big thing. It was at a time when the U.S. and the Soviet Union were sort of having a culture war, and we wanted to prove that Americans could do art too, 
And it wasn't just all about this stodgy old European stuff that maybe the Russians were better at than us. We're going to be good at art. Oh, yes, we're. So the CIA started promoting this modern art, which to many of us look like splotches on canvas. Do you ever see a Jackson Pollock painting and say to yourself, okay, you know, I, I get that it's interesting as sort of a, a pattern, you know, or something to put on the wall. I like the colors. But is it art? You probably said to yourself. And you probably, did you ever find yourself saying, I don't understand this modern art. How in the world did this become like, like a you know, million dollar piece of art when it's a can of, can of soup or something? Didn't you always find that confusing? Well, here's the answer. It was never real, and that's why you were confused. It, it was never organically popular. The CIA told you that splotches on canvas were the best thing, and you should pay a million dollars for it, and then all the rich people went out and bought it. Now, do you think the CIA can brainwash you? They made you think that modern art is good. They told you that Taylor Swift is a great musician. I'm just kidding about that Taylor Swift one. I don't really get Taylor Swift, but I'm not really the target market, so I'm not going to mock her. Obviously, she nails it for her target market better than just about anybody. So I'll give her full credit for being great at what she does. But when I look at her, I go, I don't get it. I, I have no idea how that one person became so famous. <laughs> uh, nothing about that makes sense. Unless... I'm, I'm not saying that I have any information about it, but I look at modern art and I look at Taylor Swift and I look at Beyonce and I see the same damn thing. I have no idea why Beyonce is popular. And and I, even yesterday I saw somebody who said they went to one and it, it, it blew them away and Beyonce was amazing and the show was great. I don't know. I don't really get her at all. <laughs> not at all. So every time I see somebody who's like a, an American icon in the arts, or even somebody who makes movies, you know, anybody who's sort of at the top of their game in some form of art, I now suspect it's probably just a CIA thing. Let me give you an exception. When I see a Tom Cruise movie, I say to myself, damn, that guy knows how to make movies. Like, he, he nails movies better than anybody nails movies lately, right? So I don't automatically think that's some kind of a CIA thing, although it could be. <laughs> I'm not ruling it out. I'm just saying if somebody has, like, obvious talent, and I think Tom Cruise has just immense talent for making movies, then I say, well, maybe that's just organic. But when I see, you know, Beyonce or something, that doesn't look organic to me. I feel like there are a lot of people who could do what she does. I don't know. It doesn't look special in any way to me. But I could also be just terrible at judging things. That's also possible. Uh, there's an uh, interesting uh, ex example of AI working well. Uh, Elon Musk posted one of his speeches about you know aliens and going to other planets and stuff. And then he posted a, uh, an edited version by AI. And it completely changes the experience. Imagine speeding up Elon Musk talking and getting rid of all the in-between ums and pauses. And it's just a completely different thing. And, you know, he, he posted it because apparently he liked it too. Now, I have the same problem, don't I? How many of you play me at two times speed? Come on, you know you do. Because I'm a little bit slow at developing my thoughts sometimes. But so that technology would probably be great for me for the replays. So as soon as that's available, I'll probably start running my stuff through it. So you'll have an option where it's a little tighter, a little tighter. So it's more than speed. They got rid of the gaps as well. But uh, Elon is saying again that uh, he doesn't think that uh, there are necessarily any aliens we're going to find. And his argument is that it took four and a half billion years for our civilization to become you know sort of like a real intelligent species and we only developed writing in the last few thousand years so it took over four billion years to get us to the point where we could write 
So since the universe is only about, uh, I don't know, two and a half times that old, there couldn't be too many civilizations, especially because maybe they don't last long once they're created. There can't be that many that lasted all the way, developed a civilization, and coincidentally are still around. So it's not that the universe never produced any other civilizations. It's that, that the odds that they'd still be here, you know, say 100 million years later, is pretty small. So he thinks that maybe that's what's happening. So did you ever were you ever confused why Elon Musk is sure that there aren't any aliens uh, who have visited us yet? And he would know a lot about that topic, right? I mean, if, if there hadn't been, been any real ones, I'll bet he'd know. But yet the news keeps saying that, you know, there are whistleblowers and we got all these aliens. How do you explain that? It's one of those confusing things that doesn't make sense when you read the news, isn't it? Sort of like, how did modern art become popular? Same reason. <laughs> we have documentation that the CIA has used fake CIA stories to divert the public from news that they wanted to divert them from. Do you think it's still happening? It looks like it. It looks like it's just still happening. And it looks like it's just ordinary CIA business to say that there are UFOs so that we'll be thinking about something else. Yeah. So probably the CIA explains modern art. It might explain some of our musical people that, in my opinion, don't seem as talented as their success suggests. And maybe the reason that people say they're aliens is the CIA. Maybe. Now, again, everything that I say that I attribute to the CIA is just speculative to sort of draw a big picture here. Doesn't mean I know it. You know, so just just go with it. So Trump had his record-shattering $50 million fundraiser, and uh, he's bragging about that. So that's interesting. What would you call it? <clears throat> what would you call Trump's movement? Would you call it a populist movement? <clears throat> is the reason that Trump is trying to be taken down with lawfare because the CIA doesn't want him to be president? To me, it seems like it. Again, I don't know. But when you see what the uh, intelligence people did to fake the laptop as being a Russian disinformation, when you see what our intelligence people did with the Russian collusion hoax, when you see what our intelligence people did, in my opinion, the fine people hoax was an intelligence hoax. And in fact, the whole fine people, the, the whole Charlottesville thing was probably organized by intelligence people. There were real racists, but I don't think the real racists do a good job of uh, organizing. <laughs> if you're like, like a genuine, you know, fine people hoax kind of racist, they tend to be not good organizers. So when you see them do something super organized and they're all well-dressed and they got khakis on and, and there's not a single person who didn't get a torch, hmm, ah, it looks a little bit intelligence um, organized. And as we know, our, our intelligence people do that in other countries to overthrow them. They do fake, fake protests like the BLM was fake and Antifa is fake, if you didn't know that. Uh, were you confused by why BLM and Antifa disappeared as soon as Biden got elected? Were you like, how does that happen? That's a weird coincidence. Oh, maybe it's the same reason for modern art. Maybe it's the same reason for alien stories. Yeah, maybe it's all the same damn thing. Meanwhile, um, the Amuse account... Uh, reminds us that, not reminds us, but tells us, um, I don't know if this is true, but it's reported. So I, I don't know what level of credibility I'll give this one. I didn't see the source. Um, but the, the idea is that scientists in San Francisco have been secretly spraying aerosolized, aerosolized sodium chloride into the atmosphere to reduce global warming and that the Biden regime approved it. Do you think that's true? Do you think the Biden regime approved climate change, spraying stuff into the atmosphere? Now, I don't know, 
But I will tell you, I live in the Bay Area. So if they were spraying San Francisco, you know, maybe it would have some effect on me. And I can tell you, as recently as yesterday afternoon, I was standing outside and I was looking at the clouds. And I was saying, I've never seen clouds like this before in California. And in fact, the day before, another Californian sent me a picture because the clouds were unusual, like unusually robust and interesting looking for California. We don't have much in the way of clouds. California is either overcast or sunny, or there's like a little wisp of a cloud somewhere. It doesn't look like the Northeast, but for the last week or so, it's looked like, you know, upstate New York, like big storm clouds and, you know, huge, you know, gray, white, shaded clouds. And so I don't know, but I can tell you it looks like it. it I, I literally, before I saw this story, I was looking in the sky and saying, those clouds don't look natural. So I noticed, you know, uh, so I can't say it's, I can't say it's a confirmation bias because I noticed the clouds and had really quite a lot of thought about it before I knew there was a story that could have caused it. If it had gone the other direction, I'd say I was just influenced by the story, but the realization came before the story. So maybe, can't say for sure, it just looks like it. Well, the uh, judge was rebuked over a, uh, well, let's talk about climate change. Do you think climate change is organic? Or, or is it one of those stories where you say, how in the world did this climate change become such a like global phenomenon? How in the world? Well, I have a suggestion. I have no evidence for this. The CIA. It could be that it's some major program that allows the CIA to control things it couldn't ordinarily control. Maybe nothing but that. It could be that we know if the United States doesn't, you know, do something with our own energy situation that will be at risk and you know, be will be beholden to other countries. When you see that Russia is one of the biggest producers of oil, and you see that the Middle East are some of the biggest producers of oil, what would be the best thing that the United States could do to, to remain dominant in the world? Green energy. Because if we build green energy, it takes away from Russia their only advantage, that they have lots of energy. It's their only advantage. Everything else we do in the world seems to be anti-Russia. Why would this be different? Every time we've got a, you know, a hypothesis about what's happening, it's Russia. Everything that happens is we've got to counter Russia. We, we keep producing spies that are only experts on Russia. And every, every uh, conspiracy theory is Russia. But do you think this big old climate change is the only thing that's not about Russia? Do you think it's coincidence that if we fix the climate with all these non-oil assets, do you think it's a coincidence that it would also take Russia completely out of the military game because they couldn't fund their thing? And we know that Russia can't match us in terms of uh, technical um, prowess. So if we build a whole bunch of technology that gives you energy, instead of just putting a hole in the ground and making the oil come up, well, then maybe Russia can't match us. We'll, we'll have the kind of energy that everybody wants. We'll dominate the entire world by selling them our, let's say, nukes and solar power and stuff like that. Now, of course, we didn't count on China dominating the solar power industry, but I don't think we cared about that as much as we cared that Russia didn't. Am I right? We, we didn't care so much about China having a big industry, but we really cared that Russia didn't. Now, I'm not saying that's a good idea. I'm saying that we, we're, we're always just Russia, Russia, Russia in this country, and uh, this would probably just be more of it. In my opinion, the most likely scenario for why climate change is such a big deal and we can't let it go is that it's a long-term play against Russia. Now, does it have other benefits? Yes, yes. 
if we do it right, we save the the air. We you know, maybe there's some even a heat problem. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I don't discard the fact that we could be in trouble from CO2. I don't discard that fact. I just am not convinced at all. Because the, we don't have science that's dependable, do we? Let me give you an example. Um, there's an example. Of, I just gave you the example of the watchdog. So the watchdog group told the Biden administration that they've been using a fake number, fake by a factor of 10. Now, let me ask you this. Why did a watchdog group need to tell the Biden administration, the most important government for climate change, anything? Why did they, why did it have to be a watchdog group? Because have you heard of a, a, another group that could have been? There's another group that could have told them their number was wrong. What was that group? Climate scientists. Climate scientists knew the number was wrong, didn't they? So are you telling me that the entire industry of climate scientists allowed Biden to say something that was wrong by a factor of 10, and they all knew it, but they didn't speak up? It took a watchdog group who is the opposite of the scientists, so the ones watching the scientists. So, so why would you trust anything that climate change scientists say? Here's a very specific example where the climate scientists looked at something that clearly was wrong by a factor of 10, and I'm sure some number of them knew it, and they shut the fuck up. They were not willing to risk their careers to question anything about climate change. There wasn't a single thing they were willing to, to question. So do you think you can believe their models? Of course not. No, they have no credibility whatsoever. If, if they let this go and they waited for a watchdog group to catch it, all credibility is gone. You know how I would have believed climate change was real? If the fucking scientists had corrected this. The fucking scientists. If they had been the ones to say, wait, 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 we do believe there's a problem, but we're not cool with the Biden administration using a made-up number. He can't do that. You know, we'd like to reserve some credibility here, so we got to stop you there. Nope. Nope. They just let it go. Needed a watchdog group to stop it. That's the only reason you even know about it. You don't know about it because the fucking scientists, they were worthless. Absolutely fucking worthless. But you think next time they'll be helpful, right? So the next time you're going to say, oh, they're probably right this time. No, they have no credibility. Use, use the legal standard. If somebody lies to you once, this is usually what courts will tell the, uh, the jury. If the defendant lies to you once, or the witness does, you're allowed to assume that anything else they say is not necessarily believable. And that's the same with the scientists. If they lie to you this obviously and aggressively and right in your face, and they don't correct and acknowledge how wrong they've been forever, you can't trust the next thing they say. That would be crazy. <laughs> in the real world, you don't trust anybody who acts like that. You know, it doesn't matter if they have a big science jacket on. All right, so the there was a judge that was rebuked over some January 6th stuff, and the, the same judge had made a CNN appearance mocking Trump. So imagine a sitting drug judge coming on CNN just to talk shit about President Trump. Already everything about that is wrong. Retired judge? Okay. Sitting judge? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Well, this same judge um, was found by another court to have plainly erred in his actions because he, he ordered surveillance of a defendant's computer. Uh, so this is a January 6th defendant. And this judge ordered that his computer could be surveilled to look for disinformation. What? <laughs> what? What, you're just going to surveil this one guy forever? What? That is so wrong. And that and so that's so do you believe that the justice system is acting appropriately in its lawfare against Trump? I don't. I think it's the CIA. 
Did you ever say to yourself, I don't understand how this all this could be happening? How in the world could there be 91 indictments against an ex-president? How in the world? There's only one explanation. It's the CIA. It's the same explanation for everything you don't explain. Everything you don't understand. It's all the same. Same explanation. Yeah. Of course the CIA is running the country. Of course they're behind the lawfare. Of course they were behind the fake laptop story. Of course they were behind Russia collusion. Of course they were behind the fine people hoax. Of course they were behind the George Floyd hoax. Of course. <laughs> All right. Letitia James, speaking of lawfare, uh, as you know, Trump uh, offered a, a bond and had a company that was willing to, to do it. And now Letitia James has decided she's going to investigate the company that was going to issue the bond. Do you think that's because that's a perfectly reasonable thing for the law to do? No. It's because this is blatant, in-your-face lawfare. Why can people get away with this lawfare right in your face? Because somebody important is backing them. Like... Soros might fund her next campaign. Soros who works for, oh yeah, the CIA. Right. Do you remember I told you, I don't understand why Soros is doing any of this. What? These things make no sense. It's the CIA. He's basically their bank. And now it all makes sense. Why is the border open? Why are the drugs flowing across? Why can't we close the border? It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Trump did it. It wouldn't be hard to do it again. Why can't we close the border? Why are we paying people to come here? It doesn't make any sense. CIA. CIA is obviously working with the cartels to control Central and South America. And they gain more by using the cartels, and so they let them earn, even at the expense of 50,000 lives in America. You know what I think the CIA thinks about fentanyl? That it's just uh, getting rid of the losers. That's what I think. I, I think that at the top levels of the country, Unlike you and I, who say, my God, we've got to do something to stop all these fentanyl deaths. I think at the top, they say, no, you're just getting rid of people who would have been useless anyway. That's what I think. I think that at the top, the people with real power, not Biden, but people with real power, I think that they've decided they don't want to fix that problem because it's only getting rid of losers. They're not completely wrong. They're not all losers but you can see the point. <laughs> and does that explain everything? It does. That would explain everything. Yep. By the way, have you heard my theory about who's running the country? Here's my theory of who's running the country. You know, everybody always says, RFK Jr. said this directly, that there's no way Biden's in charge. You ready for this? So if you were a dementia patient, and somebody's going to take care of you and make decisions for you. Who does that? Always your family. And always the family that's closest to you, usually your spouse. If your spouse is still functioning, it's always your spouse. What if it's not your spouse? Probably a child. Probably a child. So whichever is your most functional, closest to you child is going to be your you know, person helping you make decisions. If there's somebody running Joe Biden, do you think it's somebody, oh, say, in the CIA? Not directly. But can you think of anybody who's also a family member who's been implicated as a member of the CIA? Yes. Hunter Biden, also known as the smartest person that Joe Biden knows. In my opinion, Hunter Biden has been running the country for some time. Literally. Literally. Now, you could throw the brother Jim in there, too, because it you know, could be a tag team. But it does seem to me that the people that Joe Biden would listen to on a question such as, oh, I don't know, what should we do in Ukraine? Do you think the Ukraine, the Ukraine war makes sense to you? Have you said to yourself, this Ukraine thing doesn't make any sense. Why are we so committed to giving our money to them? 
How does it make any sense? Well, it might make sense if he knew that the Atlantic Council runs everything. It's mostly ex-CIA, which means CIA. And if you knew that Burisma is part of the Atlantic Council, oh, surprise, huh? And you knew that Hunter was on the Atlantic, uh, was on, Hunter was on Burisma board. All makes sense yet? Ukraine was a big money laundering CIA operation. There's no question about that. Biden was, uh, uh, Hunter Biden was a big part of Burisma, which is tied in with the CIA. So almost certainly, I will say certainly. I, I think this is one where you can say certainly. Hunter was protected by and working with the CIA. And that that's why he's not being punished. And I would guess that Joe Biden is completely aware of that. And I would guess that when Joe Biden's trying to make a decision about Ukraine, that the opinion of his Joe Biden's brother and son were basically you know, deeply embedded in the Ukraine situation and probably the CIA. They are probably the ones running the country. So let me say it again. All indications are that Hunter Biden is running the country for some of our biggest questions. He wouldn't be involved in, you know, changes to the budget in minor ways. He would be involved in the big stuff. The big stuff. Uh, I'm not joking, by the way. If you look at any family dynamic, as the, as the one family member's ability shrinks, the other family members take over, and it's always family members. You know that. The, the more out of touch Joe is, the more he's going to say, the only people I trust are you know, somebody I married and somebody who basically I produced. And it's just human nature. You're not going to trust that CIA officer who's got something to say. Unless the CIA officer talks to one of the Biden you know, brother or son, and then they talk to Joe, and then Joe says, all right, Hunter, you looked into it. You're the smartest guy I know. Let's uh, let's give some money to Ukraine. So there's another thing you didn't understand: who's running the country? And the answer is, it's almost certainly Hunter and maybe Jim, and almost certainly that means that the CIA is behind it. Um, let's talk about the diddler, P Diddy. I like calling him the diddler because it sounds like the Riddler, and it sounds kind of cool. But the diddler. Uh, Jesse Waters uh, did a good job of talking about that in the PBD broadcast. By the way, Jesse Waters has a new book. I'll give him a little plug. Name of the book is, I don't know, doesn't matter. Just look for Jesse Waters' new book. Um, in case you didn't know, it's out there. And uh, anyway, um, and uh, Jesse says, quote, we were told by the former bodyguard that Diddy was an FBI informant. So he was a snitch and maybe worse than Epstein. Do you think that the FBI operates independently if, if in fact, they were behind this? I don't think so. Because I think the blackmail, the blackmail world seems a little too close to the CIA because it's international. So I would think that if the FBI is involved and if he was a FBI informant, which apparently even, uh, um, even Kanye made some reference to it, so which doesn't mean it's true. But uh, there's a lot of information on it. If the former bodyguard says it's true, uh, again, that doesn't make it true. But the former bodyguard? Former bodyguard probably knows. Now, Epstein, we imagine, had some FBI connection, but more than that, we assume he was more, more into the spy world than the FBI world. You know, some say he worked for Israel, some say America, some say both. Um, but if it turns out that uh, the diddler is bigger or worse than Jeffrey Epstein, which is what the bodyguard seems to think, then uh, maybe one of the things you didn't understand about the world is, uh, again, explained. How could these people be out of jail? How could it be possible that P. Diddy could be running this major operation for years and didn't get popped until now? Maybe it's obvious. Maybe the CIA and the FBI. Well, the Swiss are holding a referendum to restrict population to 10 million until the year 2050. 
So presumably this is an anti-migration, immigration move by the Swiss. Uh, Elon Musk uh, commented on that story by saying, and I quote, Europe is dying. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If they don't grow their population all the way to 2050, uh, there's something wrong. Well, meanwhile, Brazil has uh, become a uh, a hellhole. So here's what we know. Um, so Brazil is trying to limit free speech on the X platform, and I think the other platforms, because they they have a dictator-like leader now who doesn't like populism and doesn't like free speech, and he's trying to force X to uh, block people that they don't want to be seen. Basically, political opponents, they want them blocked on X so that the president isn't criticized. Brazil, in our hemisphere. Fucking Brazil. And they're not hiding it, by the way. It's public. They are publicly censoring and reducing free speech. So you know what Elon Musk says? when they said, you've got to uh, censor all these people just for Brazil. Elon Musk said, fuck you. Uh, Lifted all restrictions. And he's going to take the hit because they'll probably cancel X in all of Brazil. (laughs) What's that sound like to you? Well, I'll tell you what it sounds like to me. Sounds like a wrestler in a subway shop who just said, I'm done. There's nothing you can do to me. I have now decided that you can't push me around. You cannot have X in Brazil, but you can't push me around. So Musk just uh, put the stake in the ground, said if if Brazil is going to lose access to the platform, that's the way it's going. But I'm not going to bend. Man. Yeah, male energy. The Daniel Penny thing wore off. Can't hold us back. So they're moving toward a dictatorship. They technically have elections, but it doesn't look like the elections will matter because if you get rid of free speech, the election will go any way that the the bosses want it to go. So I I would say that they've already lost um, whatever democracy they had. Now, if you say to yourself... My goodness, Uh, what happened to Brazil? Very confusing, right? Why would Brazil just suddenly want to give up on free speech? Feels like confusing, huh? What would explain a confusing story? The CIA? Well, let's go to Mike Benz. What does Mike Benz say about this? Um, it's not Brazil doing this. This is the United States spies and blob, as he calls it. It's, it's basically how the United States is trying to kill X and kill uh, free speech in America by using the other countries that they can influence to take down X as a viable economic entity. Yeah, this wasn't even a Brazil story. Now, Brazil wanted it too, probably, because they can censor. But the real story is, uh, how do we get at uh, X? And that uh, Benz says that since 2019, um, the Atlantic Council and their cutouts have been moving toward this. So it's a major long-term operation to control free speech in Brazil, in part to get at X. Now, not only, because it started in 2019. There you go. (laughs) Everything that was confusing. Well, the AP has a story about a, quote, anonymous accounts and all the terrible things they're doing, dominating right-wing discussions with those anonymous accounts, getting everything wrong, and making people like Elon Musk retweet things that are just wrong and terrible and wrong, the AP says. So all these anonymous accounts, who are they talking about? Let me tell you which anonymous account they didn't want to mention. You have to sort of look for it. You have to follow a link to find out who they're talking about. It's the End Wokeness account. End Wokeness. How many of you are familiar with that account? I quote them almost every day. (laughs) Almost every day. 
I quote that account. Now, the accusation is that they got something wrong, that the account said there was some story about uh, registering voters without IDs that the AP says was wrong and that Elon Musk boosted. And I think I did too. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure I reposted that. Now, do you think that's a, a, a natural, organic story that the AP was just looking around and said, here's a story. There's this account that's anonymous, and uh, they got something wrong, something big, but it was wrong, they say. And Elon Musk boosted it, so they'll make a story out of that. You think that happened? Maybe. But it looks a little mysterious to me. To me, it seems like a lot of attention for that one little account. Does it seem like maybe the CIA is trying to stop this little account for outing them for all manner of badness? It does. It, it looks like they're a little too interested in this little account. It's not so little, actually. It's doing great. And I think that the real story should have been the community notes didn't flag the account. Now, that would have been a real story. I would have actually appreciated that. If they say there's something wrong, and then they further tell me that the, the mechanism for catching it didn't work, and I don't know if it didn't work, by the way. It might actually be community noted by now, but I wasn't aware of it when I, when I, I think I reposted it. Um, so that would be a story. Hey, community notes is promising, but it, it missed this one. Totally legitimate story. But to me, it looks like a hit piece. To me, it's a hit piece. It looks like somebody building a case to censor. To me, it looks like the CIA, just like they operate through third parties and cutouts, are just using the AP to tell the story that maybe we should ban anonymous accounts. Do you know why anonymous accounts even exist? CIA. <laughs> they use anonymous accounts in other countries so that the other countries can be you know, persuading against their own governments, but it might be our guys. So anonymous accounts are how we control other countries. Now here's this anonymous account that's taking their control away. So they have to send their cutout. I'm just calling it a cutout. I don't know that. They're sending the AP to take out this dangerous little entity. So there you go. Um, so Donald Trump has said that the judge that's uh, that's given him the uh, gag orders, so he can't talk about uh, the judge or the judge's family. Trump finally said, uh, if this partisan hack wants to put me in the clink, meaning jail, for speaking the open and obvious truth, which is about the bias of the judge, I think it is both open and obvious, I will gladly become a modern-day Nelson Mandela. It will be my great honor. So Trump is saying he's going to violate the court order and they're going to have to put him in jail. Subway wrestler. Subway wrestler. He just said, fuck it. There's nothing you can do to me. Do you know how much he doesn't want to go to jail? A lot. A lot. He doesn't want to go to jail. Nobody wants that. But he just said, fuck it. You're going to have to put me in jail. If you're going to stop me from free speech on something that's both true and obvious and important, it's true, it's obvious, and important. It's vitally important. And you're going to take his free speech away? Fuck you. Put him in jail. Do you know what's going to happen if he goes to the jail? The whole social structure is going to fall apart, and it needs to. And I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Take it all. You want to call his bluff? Here's the time. Call his bluff. Put him in jail for one fucking day. See what happens. Yeah. J.K. Rowling. Rowling. She said, put me in jail. Try it. They back down. Elon Musk says, ban me in Brazil. Fucking try it. Wrestler says, you can't hit a cashier in front of me. I'm taking you down. Trump says, you can't tell me I don't have free speech in the United States. I'm running for fucking president. Put me in jail. 
Fuck you. Byron York is talking about uh, January 6th uh, overcharging. There's a case of a four-month sentence for a man who... Well, you've heard all the stories. You don't need the detail. There's an obvious overcharging of the January 6th people. We all know that. I could give you another example of how terrible it is. You all know it. You all know that this is lawfare, and you all know that the reason they're putting people in jail is to be a uh, influence on future behavior, free speech, for example. So what do you think might happen about that? Well, do you know Cash Patel, who had been in the previous administration, fairly well-known among the people who follow politics? Well, people are suggesting that he might be under consideration to be the attorney general if Trump were to win. Now, that is really scary for Democrats. Because he has said, and MSNBC is panicked about it, he said that uh, if he, if Trump uh, ever got into power, that Cash would be in favor of them going after everybody who ran all these ops. Everybody who is behind trying to limit free speech illegally. And he includes the media by name. So he says, yes, we'll go after the media, like the major platforms and even the biggest hosts, for breaking the law and trying to, I don't know, whatever, whatever things he thinks were broken or whatever RICO thing is going on. To me, it looks like there's you know clearly RICO cases for suppressing elections. Now, what would be my opinion about using the legal system for revenge if you got elected? Well, my opinion before Daniel Penny was that's a terrible idea. Right? I, I get people say, oh, you got to fight back every way you can. They're doing it to us. We got to do it to us. Ah, no, I'm sorry. You're, you're just going to make it worse if you, if you act like them. You know what I think today? Fuck them. Put them all in jail. Put every one of them in jail. Do I think that that would destroy the integrity of the United States? Don't care. That's where we're at. We're at don't care. Will it, will it destroy the integrity of the you know, politics and the justice system? Already destroyed. No. If you take everything from us, guess what? We got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. There is nothing to lose. Put them all in jail. Use the, use the Department of Justice. Put Cash Patel in front of the, in, in the top position if he's the one who's going to do it and absolutely destroy the lives of as many people as you can. Destroy their lives. I would never say that if the system were working. Never. But now mutual assured destruction. You got to go to jail. You got to go to jail. Jail. Right? No fucking around. You assholes. Every member, in, fa in fact, I think Trump said that the January 6th committee should be jailed. Did you hear that? I just saw that today. Did he say that before I said it? Because <laughs> I've been saying it for a while. No joke. It's very obvious that the January 6th committee should be jailed. You don't think there's a crime there? Of course there's a crime there. Probably quite a few of them. Do you think they withheld any exculpatory evidence? Sure looks like it. Yep, sure looks like it. Yes. Yeah, every, every member of the January 6th committee should literally be in jail. And that's the, only, that's the only outcome I'd be satisfied with, honestly. I would be deeply unsatisfied if that doesn't happen. You can't fuck the country that hard and get away with it. At least not while we're still alive. So you're seeing a lot of male energy rising. Speaking of which, El Salvador... Naib uh, Bukele, you know he's put all his criminals in jail, which apparently works. Putting all the criminals in jail apparently works. And he's got other ideas. He's got, he's got a Bitcoin economy, and that's looking good. But uh, here's some more uh, male energy. He just announced that they're offering, this is El Salvador, is offering 5,000 free passports 
uh, which are worth quite a bit, he says, to highly skilled scientists, engineers, doctors, artists, and philosophers from abroad, because 5,000 isn't many people, so that's like 0.1% of our population. And he said, despite the small numbers, their contributions will have a huge impact on society. Of course it would. Scientists, artists, doctors. And uh, he'll pay for the relocation, give them zero taxes, uh, take care of their families, blah, blah, blah. You know, even they can bring in their commercial equipment, intellectual property. Now, what's wrong with that plan? What's wrong with the plan? Nothing. It's the smartest plan you've ever seen. Why isn't the United States doing this plan? Let's see. We were aware of this idea because Trump said, you know, let's do the vetting and get the, the good people. Let's make sure they can add something. That's a Trump plan. Why aren't we doing it in this country? Is it is it mysterious? Huh. He's doing it in El Salvador. Like, so it can be done. And, and every part of it is smart. And every part of it is practical. And every part of it could be done right away. Why wouldn't you do something that's smart, practical, obvious, easy, and could be done right away? Sort of a mystery. Well, the only thing I can think of is that the CIA is in charge of immigration in our country and they don't want it for some reason. I can't think of any other reason. Because it doesn't, it doesn't fail on practicality, cost, on anything. There's not a single thing wrong with that idea. Can't do it here. Why? Why? It's because we want these big old open borders because the cartels want it and the cartels are working with the CIA. Yes, every fucking thing you don't understand is just the CIA. Everything. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, uh, Fetterman says he's not woke, especially on the squatter stuff and law and order. And he says about squatters, squatters have no rights. How can you even pretend that this is anything other than you're just breaking the law? <laughs> he says, it's wild. If you go on a, a, away on a trip for 30 days and someone breaks into your home and suddenly they have rights, this is crazy. Like, like if, this is Ms. Fetterman, like if someone stole your car and then they held it for 30 days, then somehow now they have, they have the right to your car? Like every part of it is just crazy. So why is it a law? Have you ever even seen an argument in favor of squatters? I haven't. Every other topic, CNN will put somebody on, says, oh, here's what this point of view, and maybe it's a different network, but somebody else will say, no, this is the opposite point of view. Have you ever seen a pro-squatter point of view? No, you haven't. They've never put a pro-squatter on TV, because there is none. Only the squatters are in favor of it. So why do we have this situation? How can you have a situation where the entire country is against it? Every bit of common sense and history and everything we know about people, motivation, real estate values, the law, everything we know about everything. And you could stop it tomorrow just by making it illegal to be a squatter. <laughs> That's all it would take. So why doesn't it change? I can't think of any other reason other than the CIA, right? Because when things don't make sense, it's always the same fucking people. Now, I don't know what they would have to gain from squatting. I have no idea. But it's not because there are some people in our government who think it's a good idea. There's probably nobody in law enforcement and nobody in the government. I don't think there's a Democrat. Uh, certainly not a majority. You, maybe you get a couple of squad members to say something positive, but not really. So why do we have it? <laughs> Whatever the reason is, and I don't know the reason, it can't be because of the government or the people. Right? It's not because of the people. We don't want it. And it's not even because of the government. Government doesn't want it. So well, who's left? The government and the people and there's nobody, let's say, there's no business person who wants it. The, definitely, do you think that uh, BlackRock, even BlackRock can't control it. Do you think that BlackRock and some of these companies that own like 50,000 houses they bought for renters, do you think they want squatters? That's their business. Of course they don't want squatters. So even BlackRock, even BlackRock isn't getting what it wants. And they've got a trillion dollars. <laughs> and they can't get what they want. 
and the entire country can't get what it wants, and it's easy to do, could be done instantly, and there's not a single proponent for it, and it can't get done. What's that sound like? The border. It sounds like the border. Because there's a, there, you can't even get a Democrat to say that the current border situation is a good idea, except you know a couple of fringe crazy people. There's not even a normal Democrat who thinks you shouldn't close the border. Every time something doesn't make sense, it's the same fucking guys. Same fucking guys. I don't know what the play would be in this case, but if it doesn't make sense, it all goes to the same thing. Uh, Wall Street Apes is reporting that uh, apparently the amount of Social Security we give immigrants is more than people who worked all their life in the United States in some cases. So if grandma comes in across the border illegally, she's going to get the maximum of Social Security automatically. But if you worked all your life, you probably wouldn't get maximum. You'd get something based on how much you work. But not the illegal grandma. She gets maximum. Who's in favor of that? Wh- which, which person was on TV arguing for that? None of these things make sense. Clearly, we don't have any kind of government or people involved in the decision-making. I don't know who is, but, I mean, it's not even business. This, this is one of those rare cases where it's not industry, it's not the people, and it's not the government, because there's nobody in any of those entities that would support this. And yet, here it is and can't be changed. What is it? It's got to be the same people because everything else is changeable except when they're involved, meaning the CIA. New York City is going to pay $17.5 million for losing a lawsuit because they forced uh, some Muslim women to remove their, their headgear, their hijabs for mugshots. You know, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit on the fence on this one. I think you're expecting me to, you know, say they should take off their hijabs. But there is a there's a religious argument here. They do have a religious argument. And if facial recognition can recognize their faces without needing to see their hair. Oh, by the way, was it covering their face or just their head? I'd feel different if it covers their whole face. Were they, uh, I guess I don't know enough about the story to finish what I was saying. It, if it's covering the whole faces, it's absurd. If it was just their headgear and their face was exposed, I think I'd, I might actually favor the, the people who said that's enough because you can tell who I am from my face. It was, so the, anyway. Yeah, anyway, so depending on which way that goes, it either makes sense or it doesn't. Well, Jenk Uyghur, if I'm saying it right. Um, the Vigilant Fox is reporting on X that uh, he made a shocking statement, they say, that he's now considering supporting RFK Jr. Because he says Biden has, quote, been corrupt his whole life. <laughs> now, uh, Jake is, re- uh, I, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with him. The, the hate part is when I disagree with him. The love part is he was genuinely a free speech guy. He is genuinely free speech. He is genuinely not affected by his own team. You got to call that out, right? You got to call that out. Now, I, like I say, I disagree with a lot of what he says, but I certainly support him saying it. So he says, you're not going to get anything but corruption and a Joe Biden. Um, And he says that they rig elections. He says the Democratic Party, rig, they love to rig elections, but he uses the example of rigging the primaries so that RFK Jr. can't even be in it. So yes, they rigged their own primaries, but you think they won't rig the others? And uh, Cenk goes on to say that he's not crazy about the RFK Jr. take on vaccinations or what he calls his conspiracy theories. And I will... Uh, Put this question back to Cenk. Can you name anything you don't like about those opinions? You need need to be a little more specific. Because you know the reason that you think RFK Jr. is wrong on vaccinations and has conspiracy theories is because your media told you that. It's not because it's true. Did you know that? (laughs) 
<laughs> Jenk, did you know that that's not true? That if you actually listen to his views on vaccinations, you would say, oh, well, I agree with that. If you actually listen to him. If you hear what the media says about him, you're not going to agree with that. Because what they say is he's just against all vaccinations or something. No. He says they should be tested better. You got a problem with that? He, he says that they're not tested, but you're under the impression that they are. You can fact check him. Has anybody fact checked him to be wrong about that? I haven't heard that. I believe he's quite right about that. That we, you know, there are a number of problems about um, testing them combined versus testing them separately because we give them to kids combined. But when we test a new one, we test it separately. We don't know if you give them all at the same time if it has any different effect. So those are very, very useful, normal, rational things to be asking about and to demand better. You know, demand follow-up studies, for example, that they don't do. That's a reasonable thing to ask for. And if the conspiracy theory would include the idea that uh, RFK Jr.'s uncle, JFK, was murdered by the CIA, well, um, so I'm seeing a confirmation that the lawsuit about the hijab was the headscarf only. All right. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the headscarf, people. And I'm going to say they have a strong religious feeling about that, especially if it's the women and they're showing their faces and a woman's hair can be different every time you see them. Oh, yeah, I'm on their side. I just talked myself into it. If the only thing that's being covered is their hair, a woman's hair is different every time you see them. How's that going to help you identify them? We're looking for a blonde. <laughs> well, not blonde today. I'm looking for a long hair. Well, that's short hair today. No, I'm, I'm totally with them. I, I think I'm going to back them 100% on this. Yeah, yeah ears, man. You know, the facial recognition is so good. You know, the facial recognition on your phone, I use it with my hat on, my sunglasses on, and it can only see basically the bottom part of my face and it still identifies me. No, law enforcement has everything they need. They don't need to make them violate their religious preference. I'm, I'm on their, uh, I back them on that. I don't know about the 17.5 million, that seems excessive, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Anyway, so I think Jenk is another one of these uh, people who's having some male energy and realizing that the Democratic Party is run by, what did Joe Rogan say? Uh, Rabies-infected hen house? Something like that. So Jenk, displaying his uh, genuine male behavior, is rebelling. All right, uh, the IDF, the uh, Israeli Defense Force, uh, allegedly is pulling forces out of Gaza, um, like in some kind of a big way. Now, I don't know if this is real, because it's a, it's a war zone, so don't believe anything out of a war zone, but, and they're not giving details, some people say it might be related to a, uh, a ceasefire deal to, for hostages. I think that's a good hypothesis. Um, but they've, uh, they've withdrawn all ground troops from the southern Gaza Strip, leaving only one brigade in the enclave. Do you think this is part of something bigger? Does it look to you that the Biden administration has twisted the arm of Netanyahu enough that he just has to do a ceasefire? Here's what I think. It's a fake out. I think that the Biden administration is telling uh, Israel, you have to do this thing. You have to try harder for a ceasefire. I think Israel, meaning Netanyahu, said, are you fucking stupid? Do you not understand anything that's happening here? No ceasefire could possibly work. We're not going to get all the hostages back. But I will humor you because for political reasons, apparently you need to try this. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll pull all our troops out. You can try your 
stupid idea of getting all the uh, hostages back. I mean, it wouldn't be stupid if it worked, but it's not going to work. So why don't we show how your plan fails? Let's do that. Let, let's show how your plan fails. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't believe anything from the war zone. It seems to me that if they're pulling out, it's not real. I mean, I, I don't think anything like ending the war is happening. Um, but it's going to get real interesting when we figure out what happens next. Because it seems to me that anything short of major brainwashing of the population isn't going to work. And if the, Israel, if, if the Israelis did a major brainwashing operation of people that they had removed from their homes, homes and put in refugee camps, what is that? Does that remind you of anything? People removed from their homes by the government, put in camps, and then brainwashed. Who does that remind you of? China and the Uyghurs. That's exactly China and the Uyghurs. Not a little bit. Pretty much exactly. Now, without the sterilization, but you don't need to sterilize if they're so desperate they can't have children anyway. So they've got a real problem. <laughs> you know, it's not bad enough that... The, the what I call the Holocaust asset that Israel's always had, you know, as long as everybody thought, oh, you're the Holocaust victims, you treat that situation differently than if they had not been Holocaust victims. So that was always a big asset in their international relations. And they decided to burn it by creating something that the external community is going to say, you know, that wasn't exactly a Holocaust, but it reminds us of one is the way we think about it. So therefore, we take away your asset. You can't claim that anymore. So if, if what they're doing now ends up with some kind of long-term peace, it was worth using the asset. But if part two is that they create a semi-permanent camp of people they're brainwashing, I don't know how we don't notice that looks like the Uyghurs. Now, Here's some real controversial stuff. Are you ready? <clears throat> I've often said that the way China treats the Uyghurs is not as a military or police action. That rather they treated it the same way they treated COVID, as an infection. It's something that could spread like a virus. So the first thing you do is you isolate, same thing they did with the virus, and then the next thing you do is you make sure that the virus is gone before you stop isolating. That would be the brainwashing. And the, you know, if they're sterilizing them, I don't know if that's true, but if they are, that's part of it. Now, what are, how should Israel treat Gaza and the refugees? They probably can't do what China's doing because China doesn't have to answer to anybody, really. But Israel's got more international pressure. So they can't treat it like a virus. But it is. It's, it's a mental virus. If, if the children have been infected with this virus of you must grow up and, uh, and die trying to kill the Israelis, if that's what they've been trained with, you can't let them out of the camps until you've removed the virus. But can they do that? Could, could they create a, a Uyghur concentration camp that lasts 20 years? Because that's what it would take. It would take 20 years of Uyghur treatment. You can't leave this camp. We're going to brainwash your kids. And then maybe if we're happy with you, we can release a few of you back into Gaza. So there's no right answer. But the only thing that would work is uh, abhorrent to our Western sensibilities. But it's not abhorrent to China. And let me, let me be brutally honest. Is China better off or worse off for brutalizing their uh, Muslim population? Is China better off or worse off for brutally treating 
their Muslim population and trying to exterminate their belief system. They're better off because the Muslim system is competitive. It's not compatible. So to them, it's a virus. It's just a mental one. And they're trying to remove it because their long-term survival literally depends on it. Right. And that the countries that don't treat it as a virus, they're going to have to either limit the amount of it, which is what we do in the United States. In the United States, we don't have to treat it like a virus because you can let society do what it does. You know, it's, it's sort of like you let the host get rid of the virus on its own. If you, br if you brought in one Muslim family to the United States ever, like in the history of the United States, would you be worried? No, because they would just turn into Americans. You know, a generation or two, they'd just be Americans. If you bring in more than that, are you in trouble? No, no. They probably just get become Americans. But there is some number where too many of them would come in and maybe they build their own enclaves and their own towns, and then they don't become as Americanized as if they were just, you know, interacting with everybody. We have recently created that situation. So is it Michigan? Um, I think it's Michigan. It's got a big, you know, a foothold. If it grows... It could go either way. I mean, they could just acclimate and become Americans in one generation. You don't know. But if it grows, we're going to have an Israel problem. We'll have people who effectively are in, inside the country trying to carve out their own country with a system that's completely incompatible. So we might have the same problem at some point. So uh, I like to criticize China, but I don't know what else they could do. Like if you say, well, you solve it then. I don't know. I don't have an idea. So, ladies and gentlemen, have I proven my case that the CIA is behind a whole lot of things you don't understand? And as soon as you understand that, everything makes a lot more sense. Am I right? <laughs> now, I, I, I'm getting ready to uh, turn off the main feed here and talk privately just to the locals people. They told me that there's a timing thing, that from the moment I turn it off, um, there's some kind of timing thing. So I think it cuts off too soon. So I have to say goodbye to you and, and wrap up, and then I have to sit here doing nothing. Because the, the part where I say here doing nothing seems to get cut off. So here's what I'm going to do. Goodbye, everybody, on the platforms except locals, except I'm not going to go anywhere for like a minute. I'm just going to stay here for a minute. <sighs> doing not much of anything. I can promise you there will be no more entertainment if you'd like to leave now. Nothing happening. Not a thing happening. Okay, I think we're ready. I'm going to kill this stream except for the locals, people. Stay with me, locals. Stay alive. See the rest of you tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs>